Anyone visiting the United States is gonna have to quickly get their head around number of conversions. Say you want to drive from Los Angeles down to San Diego. The road sign says 118 miles, but what's that in kilometers? You can do the math easily enough, but still, it seems like a lot of unnecessary work. Similarly, when people from America go overseas, they might have to adjust to the metric system. An American might be staying with a friend in Spain. Then the friend asks them to buy a liter of milk if they get a chance. To an American, a liter is, uh, uh what exactly? Again, not too hard to calculate, but still, why can't we all be using a universal metric system? In fact, we are all using a metric system. I mean, well, most of us anyways. The United States, Liberia, and Myanmar are the only countries still using the imperial system as their preferred method of measurement. That's uh, quite a diverse group. In Britain, road signs are generally in miles, and beer is served in pints. Aside from that, though, the UK is largely on board with metric. They trade extensively with Europe, and Europe uses the metric system. So the question has to be asked, why on earth doesn't America adopt the metric system? Well, with all due respect, Liberia and Myanmar aren't exactly global economic heavyweights. They're free to stick with the imperial system, as outdated and inconvenient as it may seem. America, however, yeah, it's a world powerhouse. It's got a GDP of $13 trillion, and it still far outweighs its nearest rivals, China and Japan. Pretty much everybody does business with the US. In fact, the metrication can be looked at as we would with the language. English is the universal language and makes it easy enough to do business and get things done. The metric system works in the same way. To be fair, America does make metric concessions for much of its manufacturing. Meters and grams are used for international trade, and drinks are packaged based on milliliters and liters. So, it, doesn't it just make sense to switch over to metric? How hard could it be, and why does America persist? Simple answers? Time, indifference, and quite possibly a pride and determination in sticking to their own way of doing things. First of all, let's take a look at some of the main differences between the two systems. Some of us over age 40 can possibly remember using the imperial system in our childhoods. This was especially the case when referring to body weight, height, and distances. 183 centimeters was about 6 feet, 81 kilograms was around 180 pounds, and 16 kilometers equated to roughly 10 miles. America first adapted Britain's imperial system late in the 18th century, when it was clear that a common measuring system was required. The French Revolution in 1789 opened up the opportunity to use a new and logical system of measurement. The proposed metric system was based on decimals of 10 and linked to the natural world. A meter was to be one ten millionth of Earth's quadrant, or the distance from the north pole to the equator. This was based on a French survey which measured around the meridian poles that passed through Paris. This was soon applied to weight and volume. The kilogram and liter were based on a thousand units that could be broken down into smaller units. Other measurements, such as Celsius for temperature, made sense. Zero degrees is freezing and 100 degrees is boiling. The reasoning behind the metric system was clear. It would save precious time when calculating the value of goods, and it would help unite the world via a sensible and easy-to-interpret system. In the 18th and 19th centuries, Britain was a superpower and presided over its colonies with its strict rule. This naturally included following any British customs such as the imperial system of measurement. When Britain began control of its colonies and many started to gain independence, the need to stick to such a system became less important. The new metric system made sense and was gradually applied to first throughout Europe and then into the former colonies. Thomas Jefferson was America's Secretary of State at the time, and it was up to him to select the best form of measurement. Although Jefferson was a big fan of France for its culture, he just couldn't bring himself to endorse this new metric system. It seemed too foreign and was based on a geographical survey taken in France. But something needed to be done because America's measuring system was random and chaotic. It was also vulnerable to being exploited. For example, a bushel of grain might be classified as 30 pounds in one town, however another pound might classify a bushel as 27 pounds. Any crafty traders could take full advantage of the discrepancies and make themselves a tidy profit. Ultimately, it was down to Jefferson to decide what system that they would want, whether it was the imperial or the metric. This also coincided with the Industrial Revolution. Machinery and equipment being produced and exported from Britain was all made under imperial guidelines. Pounds, inches, and feet were the common units for calibrating machines. To overhaul this and go with a completely new system was just unthinkable. It would take too much time and people would have to be re-educated on the basics. And so the imperial system stuck. In 1975, America attempted to encourage businesses to go metric. The Metric Conversion Act passed, making it okay to transition to the metric system. However, because changing over wasn't ever mandatory, most companies and organizations didn't bother. 
Later under the presidency of Jimmy Carter, metric road signs were trialed. The reaction was basically one of uproar, and imperial signs were soon brought back. Since then, there have been campaigns and movements from America to join the rest of the world, but it simply hasn't taken off. American industrialists balked at the thought of how much effort and how much it would cost to completely change everything. From factory machines to tools to signs to architecture designs, pretty much everything would not only take years, but it would cost a fortune. Canada, on the other hand, was keen to join the rest of the world. In the late 1970s, Canada began to slowly roll out metrication. Schools, businesses, and government bodies all gradually took on the new metric systems of recording measurements. It wasn't embraced by all, and it was met with some fierce objections, but Canada simply carried on. By the mid-1980s, Canada had almost gone completely metric. It wasn't cheap. The estimated cost was over a billion dollars, and it had taken the better part of a decade. However, it was deemed to make life easier, even if their biggest trading partner to the south wasn't as keen. So, is America likely to make the change? Uh, not in the foreseeable future. If you're visiting the US, just be ready for the calculations. A mile is 1.6 kilometers and a pound is about 450 grams. You're gonna get used to it. The inconvenience and cost aside, America simply doesn't seem interested in going metric. The imperial system has now become something we recognize as an American ideal. To give it up for a concept born overseas just doesn't sit right for many. By not going metric, America is also expressing one of the most American characteristics out there. Individualism. 